So please come on stage and welcome uh, Ivan Viola, currently from Kaust. <laughs> and Markus Steinberger from TU Graz. <laughs> and I, Martin, I will host the discussion. <laughs> Okay, Ivan, can you still remember what was the year that you had the chess paper? <clears throat> yes, which one? Oh, and sorry, <laughs> I forgot. Since we are recording all this, I would like to ask you to use the microphones to answer. Um, yeah, let's say the first one. <laughs> <laughs> sure, 2001. Perfect. <laughs> um, so how do you remember it when you were a uh, fresh student coming for the first time to this event? Well, it was uh, awesome. Hopefully, I, uh, this is an experience which is shared with uh, uh, all of you guys as well. But uh, this was um, something I had a prior experience to Czech as a non-speaker in 2000, so I sort of knew what to, what to expect. But of course, I was super uh, scared of giving the talk. And... Uh, Luckily, at that talk, we were two speakers, so I was scared only 50%. <laughs> Marcus. Um, my first Czech was 2009, so exactly 10 years ago, I think. Um, I was also really scared because it was my first talk in public, so to say. And I think it was also the time when Helwig Hauser came back um, one time or so and he was an expert in this field and it was like, oh my God, there's going to be an expert there. What is he going to say to all of this? So, but everything also went well. It was really cool. So is it correct that uh, your first paper was visualization? Yes, it was isosurface visualization. Okay, and Ivan, I guess it would be probably the same for you. Yes, somewhat. Well, it was... Uh, the first paper was uh, also together with uh, Laszlo Neumann, an esteemed colleague from uh, Girona, and he's a mathematician who needed some programming help from students, and I was the, the student, so I spent a bunch of time to understand the mathematics behind what, uh, what I was supposed to implement, but uh, that was uh, basically the, the paper about it. was about filtering. So it's not so much about visualization, okay. but I mean, it's part of the visualization pipeline. Sure. So, um, this was the time when you were a master student at TU Wien, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you continued your career? I continued my career at TU Wien. At TU Wien. Or, actually, I was a master student at VRVs. I am somehow um, tend to oscillate between uh, places. Where the Teovin seems to be kind of the center of the of the gravity in some sense. I'm maybe a dynamic uh, dynamic system with Teovin as a, as an attractor. As an attractor, you always like pass by <laughs> and then you fly away again. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, let's see how it happens uh, in the future. That is hard to predict. But um, um, I was uh, doing my master thesis at VRVs, and then I came back as a PhD student to Teovin. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, then, as far as I know your career, it, you really traveled a lot and you also prepared a few slides about that, so... Not about traveling that yeah, much, no, but... No, uh, but also what you've done besides the traveling. Yeah. So maybe you could show us now, uh, very briefly, how, okay. how your scientific work and career continued afterwards. All right, so this is my first combination of a title and a name uh, in one. Um, uh, my name, I mean, so you should read it as, as a title and a name of the speaker. <clears throat> so uh, here it is more detailed of what, what you s started to poke out of me. So I was uh, studying at, uh, I was born in Bratislava in Czechoslovakia. Uh, I stayed there for quite a long time. And there I was first sort of supervised by the father of Czech, of uh, Andrei Ferko, without me knowing that he is father of Czech without him knowing that he is father of Czech at the time, because he, he was my judo trainer back then. Um, well, uh, some, time, some time passed, and then I was studying in Vienna, uh, and then I was finished with the studies, and I remained as a postdoc, then I moved to Bergen as a postdoc, there I, 
got upgraded and upgraded, and I was giving some scientific advisory role as well, and then I got downgraded by quite a bit to an assistant professor back again uh, by, my, by the attractor Theobin. And But that was okay because I was upgraded then again. And then I uh, decided to continue on my dynamic system journey to, to KAUST. So this is one way how to look at, the, the bio, at my biography. This is the other way how you can look at the biography. Still I was born. That is something which uh, uh, is consistent. <laughs> But then I was in 2000, that was the most remarkable first moment was that in my life that I was a Czech participant. Uh, then I was a Czech speaker from my computer science project. Then I was uh, another speaker of a master thesis. Then I became an organizer. I think it was for two years. I, this, these years are a little bit illustrative because I didn't have the time to, to check all the details. I but remember this is... that, that 2003 there was Mati Mlaenik organizing and I'm not sure if you were also one of the co-organizers, but maybe. Can, yeah, can well, be. Uh, that's, that remains for the, for the historians to, 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 to find out <laughs> exactly. Well, in 2005 I was again Czech participant, 2007 again. Then in 2016 I was invited speaker and now I'm again a Czech participant. So this is, this is uh, my, my life so far, my Czech biography. Uh, my PhD was about some, what we call expressive visualization techniques. So you had volumetric data sets and you wanted to see inside and how you can sort of manage the, the occlusion. So that's what I was working on back uh, then at Tailwind. And uh, I continued with that in, in um, um, in, uh, in Bergen, in Norway, in the context of ultrasound visualization. And now, as you might have seen, I'm working on these uh, molecules which sort of uh, really kept my attention and uh, do so far very well until today. So that's a brief uh, navigational fly through through my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Marcus. You are also now, I have to say, Marcus also uh, became an organizer of the Czech and that, that's uh, something he did for the first time this year and he did a great job because this is the guy who is responsible for uh, assigning the reviews and managing the review process this year together with his uh, student helpers, uh, Daniel and Martin. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, how was your journey after your first Czech publication. Um, well, I can also show two slides, maybe. Perfect. Um, it, it's not so much centered around Czech because it didn't have so much time to prepare and look up when I have been here, actually. <laughs> but I know that I have been to Czech, I don't know, five times, six You've times? Been, uh, yeah, a lot of times because Marcus always took his students with him. So it was great that there was always, always one car from Graz packed full of students. So Marcus taking taking his students. Uh, and then when Marcus switched to another university, it basically stayed in Graz and continued. So uh, we are very glad about the cooperation we have with Graz because it's very constant and, and really nice. So the, the cool thing about Czech is you can also look up the papers you have you've written there. So I just grabbed that from on the web page and um, I actually had to look up what I, what I did back then exactly. But what I found is that also back then I was already working on the GPU mostly and this kind of stayed with me. So my first work doing things on the GPU efficiently and you will hear a lot more about that later on. So, and you can say I started with Czech in the center, um, working on the GPU, doing things efficiently and from there I kind of branched out. And um, just quickly about me, did a lot of stuff in, in Graz. Um, then after my, my PhD, I went to NVIDIA, also continued working on the GPU, as you can imagine now. Then I came back to Graz briefly, and then I went to MPI, um, Max Planck Institute, working with Hans-Peter Seidel, which was also really cool, and now I'm back in Graz again. So what else stands um, with a starting point with Czech is, a list of awards, and you can see at Czech I was only the, the third best person, but um, at least a couple of other awards followed on, on top of that. So that was already a really nice start. So I quickly thought about 
what else did it take away from Chesk and um, what do you can already find here? And the thing is, um, one of the most important points is that you should have fun with what you do. And this is essentially also something you can see here at Chesk a lot. And only if you really have fun with what you're doing, um, you will actually like it, um, perform well, and invest time in it. And something that is especially true um, for all of the scientific conferences you go to, you will make many connections over drinks. And that's also something you can totally find at Chesk, right? And um, you will also know or soon see that everyone is really well connected. And you make your first connections at Chesk, and then you can build on top of that, and you can use your contacts to get around in Europe, find some nice places to go to, and you have always seen that there are really nice people here. Um, one thing that you will also experience is that the world outside of Czech is probably a little bit more harsh or harsher. So um, you will get some rejects and so on and so forth. But um, the idea is to just stick in there and don't get discouraged. And then you will also have success publishing out there. And I guess that's my few lessons learned from Czech and what started here and how it continues out there, I guess. Thank you. Since uh, we are very short on time, I will continue with the next question. This will be actually the last question I uh, pose to my um, uh, guests, and then it will be time for you, the audience, to, to ask a few questions, and I hope we can answer them. So um, I realized that Ivan came from uh, Kaust here uh, for the Czech, and I was really surprised that he's coming because he didn't tell, and I was not expecting that a guy who uh, does such a lot of research, uh, high quality research, would have time to come here, which is really awesome and great. Uh, but you also have uh, brought a message from the cost, I guess, you would like to spread. So, Well, well yes, well, I, did, I came here for several reasons. One was that uh, I was uh, working hard in the last days and, um, or months, and I said, I want to go to an oasis of peace after I'm finished with all this. And I chose change, why not? You know, um, it's, it's like that. Um, and the, the other reason why I'm here is uh, because, uh, well, Kaust is a, is, a, is a place which is sort of uh, not very well known, I think, here. And uh, Saudi Arabia as such has uh, usually not a very positive connotation either. So I thought it would be interesting to spread an information about Kaust as an is a very exciting place for, for, for doing studies uh, because uh, it offers uh, an excellent research environment and, um, um, but also not only for like PhD studies and so on, but it's possible just to go to, to Middle East as a student, as a bachelor student, do the bachelor thesis there uh, in the area of visual computing in various directions. So if you are guys interested, any of you, uh, you are more than welcome to come. And that is for, for three months stay, you can stay up to six months, let's say, or you can do the master thesis with us, which will be for a one year long and so on. So um, there, is a, there is a very big difference uh, between Kaust and Saudi Arabia. And Kaust is something which, how they want to, you know, transform the, the relatively conservative society of, uh, of this uh, Islamic country into a new society. And I think they are doing a very good job. And in that sense, I am also happy that I am uh, uh, participating on that. Although sometimes I am a little bit having a tear in the eye if I see the news, how the other side of the, of the kingdom behaves. Marcus, so what about Graz? So you're now back in Graz and uh, I guess you are also looking for students. Well, we are always looking for students. I guess everyone is always looking for students. Um, I don't know if you had ever any success hiring people here at Czech because usually everyone is already quite settled in and usually the best students only come to Czech. Um, so if you ask me, <laughs> uh, ask or, or Ivan. <laughs> well, um, phew, I'm not prepared to answer this question with some facts, <laughs> but. You know, it's about, uh, it's about networking, spreading information, disseminating, and I, I'm sure that this has contributed to, to, um, to, to, to certain, um, you know, 
matchmaking in terms of uh, academic career. Uh, but uh, what uh, certainly is, uh, is uh, beyond any, any dispute is that uh, Czech has uh, grown a lot of, uh, of academics from the Central European region. Um, and uh, I think this alumni series sort of uh, just, uh, just underline this fact. And uh, every year you probably have a handful of people who, who will prove this. So I think it's a, it's a great place for getting the first touch with academia. And it might be also, maybe for some it's also the last touch, that's okay. But uh, for, for many this will uh, become a recurrent um, uh, routine and become eventually your life path. So some of you who are sitting here are the suspects for become alumni as well. We can even say by statistics, we, we did a survey and published a paper about that actually, uh, that approximately half of you will continue the path in the academia, so starting a PhD. Um, this is a forecast with it um, based on the historic data we collected. Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean that, you, that the students decide here on site. A lot of them decided already before, but uh, certainly Czech uh, uh, annihilates it a little bit. And uh, from what I have the feedback, it is also that you are decided that you want to continue with academia, but maybe you will find your future supervisor here because it doesn't mean that you have to continue with your PhD at your own university. Maybe you can switch within the same country or you can go to another country and all the senior professors are uh, basically here open to, to new PhD candidates. And you have great chances because you are already here uh, presenting your paper. So this is already a selection of the best uh, computer graphics and computer vision students uh, in Central Europe. Things you can definitely do is do a research visit or um, if you see that some of the topics that some of the supervisors are talking about are interesting for you, you can probably just also come for a few weeks or a month or um, Kaos is definitely also open to, to have you for a couple of months, I guess, right? Absolutely. Uh, well, I would like to say one thing which uh, relates to academia and, and uh, the life uh, in it, which is uh, two things. One is uh, you, you typically do what you want to do uh, and you are your own time manager, sometimes a very poor one. Um, uh, but, uh, and the other thing is the, is the freedom of, of where you can be in this world. So this world is not one spot where you have, were born and where, you, where we all at some point will die. Uh, this, uh, this is a round planet with uh, a lot of very interesting places and it's uh, up to you whether you use your life to, to explore those. And one way to explore it is to go and backpack for a couple of months and, uh, and see uh, how people wherever, let's say, in Cambodia live. Uh, the other way is to go there and live there for a couple of years. And that's the path which I have chosen. And I'm very happy to, 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 to use this academic uh, lifestyle, so to say, uh, to, to understand the, the main kind from more perspectives than just from the Central European perspective. Okay, now it's time to um, ask for questions from the audience. So we will be glad to ask uh, to answer them. Uh, our guests will be glad to answer them. So, what would you like to ask them, Daniel? Um, you know, uh, at the conferences, you always meet uh, smart and kind people, and you get together, you uh, you bring together, and you talk and. Uh, so you, you, you come to the point where you say, okay, we totally have to do something together at one point. And I, I think this also happened here at Chess. I mean, people know each other now and they know what they do. And um, have you any advice uh, how you could really initiate the project uh, on this uh, shared feeling now that we should do something together? So if, if you are at, at the or if you had similar research topics right now, um, what can you go further? Do you have any advice? Because usually um, you talk at conferences, oh yeah, we will definitely do something together and you never hear from each other again. Well, I mean, the, my spontaneous answer would be <clears throat> that you guys simply uh, make sure, well, there is maybe one of these two who is sort of uh, uh, 
even more interested, or maybe it's a little bit disbalanced and maybe somebody is more interested uh, in uh, this collaboration and probably this is a natural candidate for, for inviting the other over to, 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 the, to his or her place and uh, for a couple of days and discuss the, the matter in detail. And uh, then uh, after a few days sharing a dinner and uh, you know, having more time to, to sort of uh, let the thoughts um, kind of develop, uh, something uh, might come out. That is on one level. On the other level of, uh, if you are asking about somehow a collaboration which requires certain funding, well, that's uh, always from, uh, from situation to situation, whether there is some kind of a funding between these two countries or, or there, is, uh, you know, there is some natural way to, to, to fund such a collaboration. At Kaust, we have the liberty that we invite somebody from, uh, from our own sort of pocket money, as they call it, and, uh, and so these people can stay there for months or three months as, or a few days as well. Marcus? Well, I don't think there's too much to add. The thing is that people are usually always busy. Uh, I guess you have seen that, like also a lot of supervisors are sitting in here working on the laptops and stuff because there's always things to do. Or Michi is just coming in when he has some time. So um, this is also the reason why you always have the, the feeling, okay, there is some shared interest. We could do something together, but then you go back and you have all of the duties that you have to fulfill. And then there is just no time to follow up on these things. So it's really important um, if one has the feeling this is something he or she really wants to do, that this person is then going to push it. So um, you then should probably ask for um, some references or, or some papers to read and then just bug the other person and, and try to, to really make something out of it. And, and I guess um, that's all you can say. Um, it must be that or someone has to be involved and really um, push it, otherwise things are not going to happen, I guess because nothing happens by itself. That's just it. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? You don't. Was there a moment in your career where you, you got discouraged somehow or, or was motivation or had doubts that if your research does make sense? Well, I mean, not that it doesn't make sense, but um, but you get a series of, of rejects of something which you are very convinced that it makes sense, but it seems that you are the only person in, on this planet who's, who's, who shares this thought only with himself or herself. So, so this is not a very nice moment, and I think, I think this is something which is a sort of has to, be, has to be calculated in the equation for doing research. There will be a frustration, but I think frustration is a part of everyday's life uh, for any sort of career. And when I, when I look at people who are in academics, I have the feeling that despite this stress and frustration, they are overall having a, a happier life than their peers in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in, the, in the industry because uh, they are sort of, in some sense, their own bosses and they are um, somehow, you know, misusing themselves for doing a lot of work, but they are not pushed from somebody else. There is a lot of self-motivation. And somehow it's a more satisfactory life. I have the feeling, but that's my perspective. Yeah, I guess the, the most frustrating thing for, for researchers are simply the, the rejects. But this is also somehow due to how high you are aiming, I would say. So you should always try to get your project, your ideas to the best possible venue. And if you don't get any rejects, then probably you're not aiming high enough because um, it, at the best conferences, it's just really common for the, for the best people to also string up rejects um, really often. Thank you. So we have time maybe for two more questions. Oh, you're all tired. Or you're thinking, hmm, which university to choose for my PhD? Yeah, I have one from Europe. Yeah. Uh, what was uh, the, when you moved to cost, the, the first, like the beginning, what was the hardest thing? The hardest thing? No way to call. There's always something that, uh, it is never, it, never something you expect. There's always something that shows that you never expect that thing. <laughs> so here is the thing, I came there with a, 
pretty low expectation in the term, in terms of organization. So I thought it will be a it will be a beautiful melting pot, chaotic uh, environment when it comes to all these you know uh, administrative things to deal with. And uh, it and this was somehow substantiated because I heard that from colleagues who were starting there before that there is a lot of you know you will be waiting for your for your papers and your name will be transcribed into Arabic and it will be one uh, person will interpret it this way that it should be transcribed, another person will interpret it in another way and uh, then you will have to change your papers from scratch because of the second person and so on. None of these things happen. I was finished even with my driver's license um, uh, by, by I think 10 days. So this was pretty fast and it was not very, the only thing was that we arrived there and we were waiting for our for our own furnitures and things like this for two months. But this is something you 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 expect uh, a priori. But the start was actually pretty smooth. <laughs> the surprising thing was maybe um, that so I have a small kiddo who is four and a half years old, and uh, we were told I will enroll her into kindergarten and so on, and then we realized that the kindergarten is obligatory. So it's like you know, it's like a school. So you cannot simply kill, keep the kid home whenever you want. And we already had program uh, ahead that we will be traveling with the kid and so on. And then we will have unexcused hours, which will, they will kick us out, out of kindergarten, which I found a little bit ridiculous. But uh, then we found uh, that they had a reason for that. And then we somehow adjusted to this. Did you experience any surprise when you switched? between places? No. no. OK. <laughs> um, not, not really. So it, it depends on where you go, right? Um, I was mostly in Europe, a little bit to the US. I've been to the US before. So there was, there was no big surprises. But I think there's another question in the back. Oh, there's a last question, actually. I want to like, continue to change the questions. Uh, well, bear in mind that these questions the previous guys asked. Uh, what would be your best advice for all of us students here? For our future work? The question is for both. <laughs> Maybe Marcus could start. Uh, the best advice um, work hard. <laughs> and, and as I said before, still have fun, um, find something you like. Uh, stick to a really smart supervisor, um, but don't just follow him or her blindly. So also bring in your own ideas, because otherwise it, it will not be fun and you should develop your own personality. Probably find your core research interest, um, stick to it, carve it out, make your name in there first. So. Um, when you are pursuing your PhD, you should be known for being the person who does this one thing and you should be the expert on this. And after your PhD, you can go in a, in a broad sense and then um, figure out different things, broaden your horizon. Also, um, try to visit many places, go to Kaust, um, go to other places, see how, how they are doing things, get to know people, get connected. Um, because that's really important, I guess. That's it. Yeah. Marcus, thanks a lot uh, for for giving me the space and or time to, to think about that uh, the difficult question you raised. Uh, I think I am, my most compacted answer would be don't be afraid, and uh, and uh, simply you know just go for things which you would like to do, and um, and and don't forget that it sh it should be fun, it should satisfy you, it should fulfill you. And once uh, you are fully self-identified with, uh, with this, um, you, will, you will be successful and you will be doing great work. Um, one thing which I often see and hear in, uh, among people is uh, a little bit short-sighted uh, view on that uh, I want to get soon a permanent position. So just that we are clear. One thing we have in life for sure is that we will die. So nothing is permanent. Uh, so everything is temporary. And uh, I think it makes perfect sense to just have uh, to, to function on temporary positions and not be stressed by, by searching for permanent positions uh, with, a, with a stress. If you are good, 
you will end up with success somewhere because if you are successful and good, people will want you and you will need, not need to be that active to, to, to desperately find where they want you. So there is some, uh, some, some good maybe best practices how to, how to streamline things uh, for the career. You know, at some point it would be good to have a Marie Curie fellowship and things like this. I could, I could, I could tell, talk about this, uh, but but these are these are rather sort of a strategic things which are not that important as uh, as not being afraid of of doing things and um, uh, expressing yourself. Okay, the time is almost up, so this concludes our alumni session. Um, I have one more take home message. Please do not forget about your experience here in Bada Chesk. Uh, and now we continue with the invited talk of Marcus. We are a little bit shifted, so it starts 10 minutes later. Uh, it will, I guess, also end 10 minutes later. Thank and you, uh, then we have the lunch, and uh, that will be your last opportunity to give your votes to other papers and posters. Then we will uh, meet the jury. Jury will meet during the lunch and we will decide on the awards and see you then on the uh, awarding ceremony. So, Marcus, we do a very quick uh, rebuild here and you can just, uh, in the meanwhile, set up your slides. Thank you for your attention. Thank you both for coming. Thank you.